morning. This is the eighth Sunday after Pentecost, and we are gathered together in chapel and in homes and other places to worship God. I'm Bishop Barry Clark. We are in the chapel of St. Hill and St. Luke's Anglican Church in St. Thomas, joined with the people of Trinity Anglican Church in Elmer, Ontario. This morning I'm using a Celtic liturgy from Iona. And the theme for today is commitment to Christ. So the opening verse is from Psalm 139, verse 9 and 10. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the furthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me fast. In silence, be still and aware of God's presence within and all around. Opening prayer and thanksgiving. O loving Christ who died upon the tree, each day and each night we remember your love. In our lying down and in our rising up, in life and in death, you are our health and our peace. Each day and each night, we remember your forgiveness, bestowed on us so gently and generously, each day and each night. May we be fuller in your love and our love to you. Amen. As we gather, we offer up our prayers of gratitude. We pray at this time in thanksgiving for the visit of Pope Francis to Canada to meet our indigenous sisters and brothers. And we give thanks that after almost four years, the Anglican bishops from all across the world are meeting in Lambeth. at the University of Kent in Canterbury. And we pray your Holy Spirit to watch over and protect them and to guide them in wisdom, mutual respect and understanding. And we gather all our prayers of gratitude together as we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The scripture passage today is from the, 11th, the 12th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, beginning to read at the 13th verse. Someone in the crowd said to him, G Teacher, Tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Friend, who sent me to be a judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take care, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. 
Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly. And he thought to himself, what should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store treasures for themselves, but are not rich towards God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. historically rooted in ancient Israel. This would probably be the younger brother. And the understanding from the history of Deuteronomy is that the younger brother would get one third of the share of the father's inheritance and the other son, the two thirds, or if there were more sons, it would be distributed equitably, except the older son getting more. And Jesus responds to him and says, Who set me to be a judge or, orbit, or arbitrator over you? Jesus calls him friend. A friend comes to Jesus with a sense that Jesus is rabbi. And rabbis were often the ones people went to to seek a ruling on a legal case or the interpretation of the laws of Moses. It is common even today where the deceased member, father, mother, there can be squabbling among the, the children as to how mom or dad may have written out their will and the, and the distribution of their assets and how uh, some would feel that mom or dad didn't think of them as highly as sister or brother. All the human dynamics of rivalry in the family. Some would say it's an aspect of grief once the will is read. But there is always that tension of who's going to get more. So Jesus is not prepared to judge on this situation. Instead, he's prepared to tell a story, a parable. A story that invites you and me and those who heard it for the first time to make sense of it for themselves. So he said, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. The scriptures, particularly the Gospels, speak more about money, in the words of Jesus, and the economy than about sex, about relationships in terms of intimacy, and so on. It's quite intriguing to see how Jesus is inviting the society, the culture, to create an economy of equality and justice knowing full well that the wealthy 
will continue to get rich. We know that, don't we? When we read different uh, aspects of, quote, stars or public figures whose wealth is beyond even comprehension. And I can't judge that whether they are selflessly giving to support the, the poor, the marginalized, or the outcasts. I don't know that. But what I do know is that the discrepancy continues to, to increase between the, the poor nations with the wealthier nations becoming richer. So we think about greed today in this gospel passage. I bring us to a wonderful moment in which Gregory the First, in the Pope Gregory the First in the sixth century, highlighted the seven cardinal sins. And the seven cardinal sins, pride, greed, lust, envy, gluttony, wrath, and sloth. <clears throat> Each one of these would take a whole teaching upon itself. But today we're invited to reflect on our possessions and how we might be more consciously aware that our possessions don't make who we are. Who we are becomes the source of our integrity, or as in the seven virtues, kindness, temperance, charity, chastity, humility, diligence, and patience. In contrast to the seven deadly sins, there's the seven virtues, as they're called. And where do these counteract with our own sense of greed for a moment? Our need to possess, our need to accumulate. But we go back to the uh, friend that Jesus called about settling the inheritance. His father is dead. So all the wealth and possessions that he may have gathered for himself, as the image goes, you don't see a Brinks truck following a, a funeral car or a hearse. Or as the scriptures say, we brought nothing into this world and we can take nothing out. And finally, the parable ends with this wonderful phrase of Jesus. So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. Being rich towards God is doing the right thing. And being aware that we can share our generosity with others. And to recognize that there is poverty. There is injustice. There is inequality. And how might we as individuals and as a community of faith work towards the values of God's reign, of equal distribution, <clears throat> of our wealth, equal distribution of our care and concern for others. So the story, the parable, only you or I can bring it to a conclusion of what we heard for ourselves. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Teach us, dear Christ, 
to be lifelong disciples, to think your thoughts after you, to develop a sense of wonder, to trace your hand in history, to understand the times, to distinguish the true from the false, to relate the part to the whole, to see and serve the greatness in others. Amen. Christ with us, be in our waking and our working. Be with us in our cleaning and counting. Christ, be with us in our talking and our texting. Be with us in our shopping and our sharing. Christ, in the little things. Christ, in this thing. Christ, in that thing. Christ, in all things. Make us pilgrims of the world until we see your face in everyone we meet. Make us pilgrims of the grail until we see your grace in every place we visit. Make us pilgrims of the road until we see your prince in every chore we do. Amen. Life be in our speech, truth in what we say, the love Christ Jesus gave, be filling every heart for us. The love Christ Jesus gave, be filling us for everyone. And we pause and we pray for the coming day and to follow Christ more closely. Holy Spirit, we have heard the words of Scripture, we have prayed, inspire us to walk in the way of Christ, being attentive to the needs of others and our own needs. And to lay before you the concerns we have for ourselves and for one another and for the world in which we live. Amen. Bless to us, O God, the earth beneath our feet. Bless to us, O God, the path on which we go. Bless to us, O God, the people whom we meet. O God of all gods, bless to us our life. Amen. It's wonderful to be with you today. I pray you have a wonderful day and a great week. And enjoy, find the joy that brings you delight throughout this day and this week. Whether it's in nature itself, in children, in relationships of love, in friendships. Take time to delight and enjoy and be surprised of how God is mixed in all of this for us. Amen. Go now in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.